Here, is a computer connected to the internet. When it has a software installed, that can listen to internet traffic. Then it can act as a server. It's that simple. When this computer is connected to the internet, it gets a unique address, like any normal real-life home, or office. This address, can be made more readable, by acquiring a URL address, like you see on most web pages. Voila, we have a server. Then we need somebody, who wants to browse our web pages from the server. When this browsing person navigates to our web page, his browser sends a request to our server. It is transmitted over the HTT protocol. That's the HTTP you see in front of most URLs, when browsing the internet. A simple HTTP request can be for example get index.html from some server host. Your browser does this part automatically, you don't have to know about the details of the HTTP protocol. Our server software then receives a request, basically telling, that this user wants whatever we want to give him from the index.html address. The server software can respond with a simple HTTP message, with an automatically generated OK status code, and a simple HTML page containing a title and a body. Our browser software understands the HTML markup we received and the HTTP message from the server. Our browser can automatically display the content. This is basically what browsing the internet is all about, asking and receiving HTML files over the HTTP protocol. Producing simple HTML pages as answer from a server is simple. Most server softwares have a default index.html page ready, without a need for any actual programming. However, when you want to program more complex web pages, like an online bank or a web store, or pretty much anything, where there are choices for the user, that's when it gets a little more complicated to produce the HTML code, we send as the response. We actually write server-side programs with some programming language, for producing the HTML code for the browser. That's when you start talking about things like Java Enterprise Edition, PHP, .NET, or Ruby on Rails. You may also have stumbled across many confusing Java frameworks and technologies, like JSP, Spring, Hibernate, etc. They all try to help in producing an HTML response to the browsing user. One of the most robust ways of producing an HTML response, is with Java servlets. First we have to write some configurations, traditionally in XML, so that our server software understands to ask our Java program for the HTML response for a certain URL request. After that, we just produce the HTML response manually in our program code, like we would write any other Java program. In principle, we could construct an online bank with this method, only problem is, that it would become awfully complex. We would have to understand, what the user is doing, and then produce him very complex HTML pages based on his actions. This is when frameworks like the Spring Framework for Java step in. They specialize in producing HTML code, whilst enabling simple controllability of complex web pages. However, beginners may find these frameworks confusing, since they very effectively hide the actual logic of receiving HTTP requests, mapping them and producing HTML responses. Typically the frameworks give you a so-called view file for producing the HTML pages. This view file can be only static HTML, but usually you want to produce dynamic content, like his account balance, before sending the HTML response back to the user. So where, and how, do you get this data that will be shown on the view page? Typically the data like the account balance, is stored in a database, 
A database is nothing else than a place for storing data. The simplest database could be a simple text file. Usually, the databases are however so-called, SQL databases. SQL databases help you find the data easier and faster, than from a stupid text file. You get the data from the database in whichever way is suitable for you. There are also frameworks, like Hibernate, for helping you fetch and organize the data. Now we still need to bring this data to the HTML page. One typical way of working with the data, is using so-called model objects. The models are used for passing on the data to the view. After you have filled the model with the data, you pass it on, to the view. Besides these models for passing the data, and views for displaying it, we need so-called controllers. The controllers are in charge of receiving the calls from the browsing users, filling the appropriate models, passing the models to the appropriate view, and telling that this view is the one we shall send as the response, for this particular request. This is the so-called model view controller principle, which is one good approach for building complex web pages in a structured way. Spring and many other frameworks follow it. Thus far, we have been doing all the operations and calculations on the server, and just sent static HTML back, to the browser. What about JavaScript, what's that? I've heard that it's somehow related to web pages. JavaScript, is a programming language that most browsers understand. With JavaScript, you can implement a lot of extra features on your otherwise static HTML pages. Most modern web pages are full of JavaScript. Doing things like animations, autocomplete, date pickers, validations, any interactive content, you name it. We have lately seen a trend, of writing so-called, single-page applications. They are designed to receive one simple plain HTML page from the server, and then implementing all the actual functionalities with JavaScript. In this kind of programming we use JavaScript to fetch the data from the server. The server is not any more responsible for producing the HTML code, but only for serving the data. The data is fetched with so-called, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, shortly AJAX requests. This is once again nothing else but sending an HTTP request and receiving a response. Only this time the response is not a complete HTML page, but only plain data. Most often in the format of a so-called JSON object. This JSON object is very similar to the model object, we handled earlier with Spring, on the server side. A JSON object is easy to handle with JavaScript. This browser-side JavaScript programming, enables us to respond very quickly to user interactions. When the user selects for example his secondary account, we can only fetch the new balance figure. We don't have to get the complete HTML page from the server. When the server only serves plain data, and doesn't do the actual rendering, then it's easier to build for example mobile clients, for the same application. Because the amount of the JavaScript code has become so massive, there have emerged tons of frameworks for structuring the writing of JavaScript for web pages. So you can for example think of AngularJS as the representative of the Spring framework on the client side. It has a similar approach than the model view controller approach with Spring. I've heard convincing arguments about not using frameworks at all, especially for client side development. You often end up solving problems caused by the framework, not business. The most popular JavaScript library, jQuery, is mostly about selecting elements in the HTML code, like one text element, 
and then doing something to that, like hiding it. The purpose of JavaScript code is still just to modify the HTML code, and the CSS styles, like element colors, on the web page. The browser, then shows the changes on the page. Lately it has become popular to write JavaScript for server-side as well. So for example Node.js is a server environment, where you write the server-side code with JavaScript. It's also possible to code web pages with no server-side code at all, with client-side JavaScript only. You could use for example a cloud-based or third-party NoSQL database for storage. Should you be wondering about HTML5, I could just say the following, HTML5 makes some things easier, for example adding videos to your pages. In the big picture, it doesn't change much. Let's wrap it up. Web programming is about serving HTML pages, over the HTTP protocol. You can do this either, by serving every HTML page from the server, or you can rely more on JavaScript for fetching the needed data from the server with AJAX requests, and putting them in place on the HTML page. That's web programming. <laughs>